question is from May Punk. Is it okay to skip trigger sessions if you are feeling sore or tired from a previous workout? That's actually the time you should do them. Oh, my Boom. gosh. Yeah, so, exactly. So if you don't know what a trigger session is, these are very short but very frequent uh, sessions that you do typically with bands where you're targeting specific muscles, getting a little bit of a pump, feeling a little bit of a burn, maybe eight-minute long session, and then you stop. And you typically do these on your off days. Trigger sessions are phenomenal when you're sore or when you're tired. If anything, they, they, they speed up recovery. In fact, when I'm in a situation like Adam's describing where you said you, you worked out and you're super sore, you might have overdone it, one of the best things to do is to do some trigger sessions. Get your body to recover faster. It's one of the absolute best things you can do when you're feeling that way. And, you know, it's it's funny. We know this instinctually. Like, think of the last time your legs got really, really sore, and then you had to get up and maybe ride a bike or stretch a little bit. How do you feel right afterwards? Soreness dissipates a little bit. You feel a little bit better. I learned this lesson uh, the first time I figured this out a little bit was I was I was – I want to say I was 16 – and um, I was I had worked out my biceps really really hard, and I was super super sore in my biceps. This is before I, I understood you know overtraining really well, and I had just bought myself a BMX bike, and my cousin had gotten one too. So him and I would work out together. So the day before we hammered our biceps, the day after we're like, hey, let's take our bikes out and let's go practice bunny hopping over things. And you guys know bunny hopping, you have to pull up on the handlebars. As part of a bunny hop, especially when you don't know how to bunny hop, you pull way too hard as you learn, right? So I remember we went out and we were practicing and I'm pulling on this handlebar over and over again. And I remember thinking like, I just, I wasted my bicep workout. I shouldn't be doing this on my biceps. I should just let them rest. And I remember that the day after my soreness was gone and I actually felt like I built a little bit of muscle. I started to piece that together like, huh, it was the extra movement that got the recovery. You know, to well, I mean, I think this is when trigger sessions have the most value. Uh, I really do. I mean, it's not that they're, they're, they're great by themselves without uh, being sore, but I think the truth is when you're always trying to hit that sweet spot, you tend to be overreaching a little bit most of the time. And one of the, I think the, the, and we know this as trainers and coaches. And one of the things that I think has made the trigger sessions so beneficial is because it facilitates recovery and it speeds that process up. I mean, so Sunday I was supposed to go lift again and I was supposed to do squats and I was so damn sore that it, it, it impeded that. But instead what I ended up doing was mobility and triggers, did body weight squats. I want to get that blood and oxygen moving mm -hmm. through my body and pumping that through. That'll help facilitate recovery even faster. I feel better today because of that. Uh, but I think that's where I think trigger sessions, sometimes people... Uh, they they up they go at it the same way. I think we a lot of them go at workouts. They they think you too need hard. To, yeah, yeah, too hard. It's literally you it's are not supposed to damage. You're just trying to pump blood in the muscle. Yeah. Take a pick the band that is not really hard for you to do. Fifteen to twenty reps. You should be able to easily do fifteen twenty reps. We're using biceps as an example. Since Sal you brought just want to get a little bit of a pump. Yeah, that's it. Three sets of fifteen to twenty reps with an easy band, and then move to another muscle. Like that, that's it. I'm done. I'm done with my trigger. Yeah, the thing that you, that this might illustrate a little bit better, but I, I think we, we, we tend to confuse recovery and adaptation. We think they're the same thing. So when you, when you cause damage with a workout, your body recovers from the damage and then simultaneously often or sometimes afterwards, it also tries to adapt. So recovering would be like, I cut my hand and my skin heals. Yeah. Adaptation would be my skin grows a, a callus to prevent a cut from happening again in that same spot. So those can happen simultaneously. Now, if you if you train really, really hard or too hard and you're really sore, your, your body's probably trying to adapt, but it's also trying to recover. And recovery tends to be the, the priority. Well, what ends up happening oftentimes is you worked out too hard. Recovery takes far longer than the adaptation. Adaptation happened, yeah. but now adaptation's there and your body doesn't keep the callus for very long. If there's not a good signal being sent, it'll it'll take it back down. So you might have gained a little bit, but then you lost because yeah. your body's just recovering. You could have had the next workout that just cut off that callus. Right. And so too much. So the trigger session causes no damage. What it does is it speeds up recovery, but it does send a small adaptation signal. Or if anything, it strengthens the adap adaptation signal that you sent before. This is why trigger sessions are so exceptional for exactly what this person is talking about. When you feel like you might have overdone it, 
Do some light trigger sessions on that body part. Oh, and it, this has tons of value for someone who doesn't even have our program. So if you don't have any fucking clue what we're talking about right now with trigger sessions and it's how, in maps and a ball. Yeah, right. So. It's in it's in our program. But if you don't, it, like it, it, an easy way to explain it to somebody who's following something else or doing their own workouts. You know, you get let's use keep using the bi we'll use bicep and legs. Right, my legs sore, your bicep sore. You do some air squats. You know, for twenty reps, just body weight. And you do three sets of that for, you know, 15, 20 reps with like maybe 30 seconds in between, that'll pump my quads up. That's mm -hmm. all I, that's it. That's all I need to do. And do that like two or three times that day. Yeah, that's it. Two mm -hmm. or three times a day. That takes me a couple minutes to do the squats. And then I do some band, grab some bands and do 15 to 20 reps, three sets with 30 seconds rest in between, get a pump in my biceps, done with that. You do that a couple times a day on the muscle group that's really sore and watch how much faster you recover and you feel from that.